Vectors. You've likely heard of this term before, and you probably have a general idea about what they represent. In game development, we use vectors to represent positions, rotations, sizes, and directions. For example, this part right here is at the position of 444. Pretty straightforward. However, another way to think about this value is by imagining an invisible arrow coming from the origin point of the workspace, which is 0, 0, 0, and that arrow is pointing towards this point of 444. So you can imagine an arrow looking in this direction, and the total length of that arrow reaches to this point of 444. That imaginary arrow would be considered a vector, because ultimately a vector represents a direction and a magnitude, and that magnitude is the length of the vector. So for example, with my origin here, if I move it four studs along the x-axis, you'll see it move that direction. And then I can move it four studs up on the y-axis. And then finally, we move it an additional four studs on the z-axis, and we end up at our position of four, four, four. And you can imagine that line from the origin point pointing towards this new position. That is our vector that describes the change from our origin point, because if we add 444 to 000, we're going to get 444. Another example is to think of the vector, let's say 333. Three, three. What would happen if I were to add the vector of 333 three, three to this vector of 444? Well, the vector of 444 four and, four and the vector of 333 three, three would both be pointing in the same direction. It's just the vector of 444 four is a little bit longer. Now, if I wanted to add the vector of 3, 3, and 3, we're going to have a continued direction in the same direction from the origin point in that direction. So you can imagine from our point of 4, 4, 4, if it was acting as an origin point, an additional vector of 3, 3, 3 pointing towards this new position right here, which is 7, 7, 7. So if I add 3 to 4, that would be 7. So we move 7 across the x-axis, then we move another three studs across the y-axis, and then finally another three studs across the z-axis, and we get to our new position of 777. Seven, seven. So that represents our change in position. It's a vector with a length and a direction. So to demonstrate this, I have my little glowing part right here. I call this my tween part. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to tween it to the position of four, four, and four. And then we're going to add a vector of 3, 3, and 3 to that position, and we're going to see where that ends up. So let's go ahead and run this. And you'll notice that our little starting point is going to move from the origin to that first point, and then finally it reaches the second point. That first point was a change of 4, 4, 4, that was our vector, to that new position. And then we added another change, which was the vector of 333. Three, three. We added that to the original vector, and we ended up at our final position. Now, instead of moving to this final position, let's say I wanted to move halfway between these two different positions. So between 4, 4, and 4, and between 7, 7, 7. Well, to do that would actually be very simple. All we need to do is we need to divide this value right here by 2. So we're moving half as much which will allow us to end up in a position between these two different points right here. So if we were to run the game this time, we'll first end up at the position of 4, 4, 4, and then we move, but we only move halfway because we divided that vector in half. So now we're at a position between these two different points, which is the position of 5.5, 5.5, and 5.5. So you can think of this as the position in the workspace, but you can also think of this as a vector. So while they store the same values, they have fundamentally different concepts. So you can think of this vector as an imaginary arrow from the origin point describing the change to get to this position. So it's a change or a direction with a particular length. In this case, it's 5.5, 5.5. To this new point. So actually, let's go ahead and take a look at what that length is exactly. I'll create a new vector 3 with that position, and then from that vector 3 we can grab the magnitude or the length of the vector, and let's go ahead and print that out. So with a vector of 555, five, five, it's approximately 9.526 studs away 
from the origin point. If we had, let's say, a vector of 1, 1, and 1, the magnitude of that is going to be 1.732. So it's about 1.73 studs away from the origin point. Now, another way we want to use vectors is by using it as a direction. And sometimes we only want to use vectors as a direction and nothing else. So this means we might want our magnitude or the length of our vector to be exactly one stud. And we do that by grabbing something called the unit vector. And it says a normalized copy of the vector, one that has the same direction, but a magnitude or a length of one. So this time, if we go ahead and convert this vector of 111 to a unit vector, and then we were to grab the magnitude, you're going to see that the magnitude is basically one stud. Now, why is this useful? Well, it's useful because we can use these unit vectors to calculate something called a dot product. So for example, right here, I'm grabbing the unit vector of my first part, which is this one right here, which is describing the direction from the origin point. So basically you can think of a arrow that is pointing towards this part, but it only has a length of one stud. So it's not going to reach all the way to that part, but it's basically looking in that direction. And then we're also grabbing the unit vector of our second part, which is up over here. And you can imagine a, another arrow with a length of one stud pointing towards that second part. Now, both of these objects are in the exact same direction. And the way we can prove that mathematically is by using the dot function, which returns a dot product. And the dot product is a value between negative one and one. And it describes how similar two different vectors are. Are they facing in the same direction or are they facing in opposite directions? If you get a value of one, that means both vectors are facing in the same direction. And if you get a value of a negative one, that means the vectors are facing in opposite directions. So because our two different positions here are in the same direction, that means the result we should get in the console is going to be one. Let me go ahead and comment this out up here and then let's go ahead and run this. And you're going to see we basically got a value of one because both vectors are facing in the same direction. Now, if I were to shift this other part slightly, let's say we move it over there. Now you can imagine an arrow pointing towards this part and then we have another arrow pointing towards that part. They're not going to be the exact same anymore because they're in two different directions. So now if we calculate the dot product this time, we should get a different value, probably around, okay, there we go. We got a value of 0.61. Now let's say I wanted to make this part in the complete opposite direction of my other part here. So let's make the position negative four, negative four, and negative four. So we have our position up here in this positive direction. And then if we continue going this way, we're going to get to our other part that's in the negative direction. So imagine an arrow pointing from the origin point looking at this part and another arrow pointing towards the second part. And because both of these vectors are in opposite directions, we should get a value or a dot product of negative one. So let's go ahead and run the game. And there we go. We got our dot product that's basically negative one. Now one way dot product is useful is let's say we have a player. Imagine this part is my player. And then let me go ahead and show which way it's facing. So imagine we have a player facing this direction and let's say we had another player. Let me show the orientation indicator. Let's say we had another player over here and we wanted to check what direction these players are facing compared to each other. So let's say the player is facing this direction and our player is facing this direction. And we want to check whether or not this second player right here can backstab the other player. Well, if we were to compare these two directions, we're going to notice that they're not exactly facing in the same direction. In order to perform a backstab, we wanna make sure that our second player is actually facing in the same direction or almost the same direction as our first player. And we wanna make sure that our second player is behind the first player. And that will allow the second player to backstab the first player. And this is what we can use dot product for. Because if both of these players were facing in the same direction, the dot product is going to be one. And that means, hey, this player is looking in the same direction as the other player. The only thing we need to do is check if this player is behind the other player. 
and if they are, we'll allow a backstab. But if our player is facing this direction, well, they're facing in complete opposite directions. How is this player going to backstab this player when they're not even facing towards the other player? So that's just one use case with dot product. Now, another cool thing we can do with unit vectors is we can multiply them to manipulate the magnitude. Because the unit vectors have a length or a magnitude of one, we can then multiply it by another value, let's say five, and that way we can manipulate the magnitude to be five studs instead of one stud. Now let's go ahead and manipulate our part one right here. Instead of it being this particular distance away from the origin point, let's say we want it to be exactly two studs away from our origin point, but in the same direction. So right now, let's go ahead and check the magnitude or length of this vector. So we do vector three dot new, and we check the magnitude. Right now it has a magnitude of 6.928 studs. So it's 6.9 studs away from the origin point. But let's say we want it to be exactly two studs away. Well, we can grab the unit vector of this position, which will have a length of one, and then we can multiply it by a value, let's say two, and that way we'll have a new vector with a magnitude of two studs, so it's exactly two studs away from the origin point. So inside of our workspace, let's refer to our first part. Now let's go ahead and set its position equal to, we'll grab its position again, and this time we wanna grab the unit vector of it, and then we just wanna multiply this by two. So now if we go ahead and run this, as you can see, now we have our part at a position that is exactly two studs away from the origin point in that same direction. Now let's go ahead and actually print out inside of the workspace dot part one, we get its position and let's print out the magnitude and it should be two studs. So if we hit enter, there we go. It's basically exactly two studs away from our origin point. Now we also use vectors for all sorts of other different things such as representing the size of our part. This vector here doesn't really represent a position or a direction from the origin. It just simply defines the size of our part on its X, Y, and Z axis in studs. So if I want this sphere here, let me change it back to a block. If I want it to be four studs on the X axis, I can do that. And then maybe I want it to be 10 studs on the Y axis, I can do that as well. So we use vectors to represent sizes of objects. We also use it to represent the rotation or the orientation of objects. So let's say I want to rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis. I can do that and it's represented by a vector. So vectors are really just one of the important mathematical building blocks for games, for positioning stuff, to represent the direction of things, to represent forces being applied to objects and all sorts of different other concepts in games. This was just a brief overview of vectors to help you understand the concept more. There's a lot more to talk about regarding them, but this video would end up being way too long. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.